Day 582 of the Ukrainian war map, also known as the Russo-Ukrainian war. Juzzy here, and today is another update as I take a simplified and down-to-earth approach to some of the most important happenings on the ground in Ukraine. So starting off, we'll take a look at those Russian losses once again, as currently... Russia sits on more than 277,000 military personnel losses. Then as for hardware losses, so 4 tanks, 12 APVs, and an incredibly whopping 38 artillery. And I remember when 14 or 15 was a good day. And the monthly rate at which Russian artillery is being destroyed continues to increase, and September's not even over yet. Then we'll head it back across to the map today, where it was first thought that Moscow's key, Chelovsky, military airfield was burning to a crisp. But the fire was then confirmed with the help of open source geolocating to be about 20 odd miles northeast of Moscow city at an industrial location. With an incredible fire, possibly an ammunition cook-off. Also, quite a picturesque photo almost deserving of a wallpaper, if I am to be entirely honest. Then we'll head down to the Ukrainian map today as 34 out of 44 Shahed drones were shot down overnight by Ukrainian air defenses, mostly in the central and uh, or south of the country there. And with that also included six reconnaissance drones which are typically designed to assist with determining target locations and attempt to confirm that the dirty work has been carried out. Then moving across to the north of the Donbass, really at the Kremina location here today, as the Ukrainian forces from the Atom Group uh, hit a Russian Strela-10 SAM system with an FPV loitering munition causing an ammunition cook-off there, and it's always of great relevance to the AFU to take out uh, these, these types of systems, these SAM systems, with the Strela-10 being a short-range surface-to-air missile system designed to engage low-altitude threats such as helicopters. Then moving down a bit, as there's been a number of uh, different reports on marginal gains or advances made by the Ukrainian forces just north of Bakhmut close to the highway uh, that leads up to Slovyansk at the orokovo vasilivka direction. And I would expect over time Ukraine to vertically flatten out uh, this front line here. Although the reason why Russian forces have been able to hold on to this position, or frontline protrusion, if you will, for the time being, is certainly in part due to being one of the, the few localised places on the map where they more so hold the upper ground. And you can somewhat see that uh, topographically there. But it's really not overselling it to say that this is inherently untrue for the remaining 97% or so of the map as it relates to the, the two opposing forces. Then moving down just a little bit, so the AFU expelled the uh, Russian forces even further just east of the railway tracks uh, at Andrivka. Which is impressive considering in many places up and down the map here although hard to see, this is largely where the front lines are drawn, at the railway lines. Then what I find most interesting in this region here is that uh, how Russian personnel within the so-called Luhansk People's Republic unit describes the, the Russian counterattacks in Bakhmut as no other than Zerg rushes with no progress. With this Russian referencing the, the classic StarCraft game. A Zerg rush of which is normally a pretty successful strategy, but in this case, not so much for the Russian side, as he goes on to also then say that uh, men are thrown into the meat grinder just to carve out a few decent looking headlines in the Russian media, which actually sounds just about right. Then in the east, uh, this one's just south of Avdivka, so Ukrainian forces hit uh, and uh, destroyed a Russian BMPT Terminator with an FPV loitering munition. And I remember such a time just six months ago or so when Russia started introducing these in limited volumes, touting them as their advanced and basically invincible new armoured fighting vehicle platforms. But too bad they didn't live up to their name, and too bad Russia doesn't have many of them either. 
Then we'll head across to the southern axis today as Russian channels have been reporting about a heavy escalation near Verbova and Novoprokopivka. So we'll zoom in nice and correctly there. And it all very much suggests, as expected, Ukraine continues their offensive operations in the towns, giving no chance of reprieve or a break for the Russian forces stationed here. And something usually very beautiful manifests out of conditions like these. And in fact, Ukraine has even expanded their flank east of the town of Novoprokopivka, again pushing back the Russian front lines very most recently there. And so this town, more and more, is not without its drone footage. With this still from a video showing the AFU hammering away at Russian forces uh, hidden inside the remains of houses on the, uh, the town's northern outskirts. And we've been learning more and more about Russian tactics in this region, or better to call it Russian choices, which has been that they are, they're not pulling their troops up from the rear of the Russian Federation, but instead are moving them along the front lines. That is to say, they are trying to make a, a larger grouping in one place at the expense of the fact that in another place they are weakening it uh, a bit. With information uh, such as this being recently divulged from a Ukrainian tactical uh, military analyst. But perhaps said even more simply, and even in a more objective way, is that Russian forces' uh, personnel resources are continuing to be stretched quite thin. Oh, then also for this region, there's been some fresh reports of some Russian soldiers pulling the old switcheroo, changing into civilian clothes, then fleeing from the front lines. Now, to be fair, I haven't gotten much uh, in the way of additional corroborating sources to confirm this, but it does give me the chance to say my favourite line, which is that, if true, it wouldn't even be the first time that it's happened as this was something of a rampant issue for the Russian forces as they were forced to flee or withdraw or gesture of goodwill or anything you want to call it when they were pushed out of Kherson's North Bank and Kharkiv. So it really throws me back to some of those vibes from previous times. Then we'll head across to some news for today. So we'll start off again with some hardware news. So Poland has just handed over another batch of tanks to Ukraine, which is always quite noteworthy news. And these such tanks are the PT-91 Twardy tanks, which are an upgrade to the T-72 Soviet tanks and include better armor, better engine, in fact, as well, and more advanced fire control systems. But as for a little context with these, the PT-91s and the Russian T-90 tanks, which are the best tanks that Russia has to offer in this war, are both from the same T-72 tank family. And thus, in terms of overall performance, the P uh, PT-91 and the T-90 are generally considered to be on par with each other. Then as for some Russian hardware news updates, so I really want to quickly squeeze in this Russian hardware update, which is from a few days ago now. I uh, just didn't get a chance to pop it in the other day. As most recently spotted in Kherson was this Russian Frankenstein creation of an MTLB with yet another naval gun strapped right on top of it. And this one specifically on screen has since been rendered combat ineffective. As if you look closely, you can see that from the, the well, you can see the blast marks apparent uh, on the hatch and on the side. And the larger point being, of course, that Russia's ongoing use of stitching together not fit for purpose parts continues to put on display how badly Russian weapon stocks have been depleted. But out of all these monstrosities so far, I think the helicopter rocket pod uh, attached to the uh, APV was my favourite one. It's more art than science, isn't it? Then in some more news, uh, something of a, a pre-funny perhaps, wasn't sure where to put this one. But a, a Russian, well, the Russian state media uh, broadcasting channel had a, showed a meeting of all the heads of the Russian MOD's senior board. With, in a surprising moment, of the ghost of the head of the Black Sea Fleet, Admiral Viktor Sokolov being present via video link. 
strange because uh, a person who was considered uh, this person eliminated after the recent Storm Shadows uh, hits on the Black Sea Fleet HQ in Sevastopol last weekend. And moments like these are, are not without confusion for a whole variety of reasons, in fact, as uh, first of all, he was not he was not really moving. He was it was like a freeze frame almost going on there which may have indeed been uh, from a previous recording of his presence at such an event. But that's not even the most bizarre part here, because in the last day, the Russian MOD posted a video on their website on a meeting with Sokolov, speaking about how things are, are going well. In fact, he said they were going great. With him very oddly in the interview, never even mentioning the situation of the destroyed Black Sea Fleet HQ. It's actually believed that this is an interview from an August recording. But then to top that off, the, the Russian MOD website took down that video as fast as they put it up. It's not there anymore. And I mean, hey, remember all the, the Bordanov and Zelizny uh, fakes regarding their own deaths? Well, they shot to social media straight away putting those rumors to rest. But not this guy. So it's very possible, given all the information we have, that Russia has decided to not publicize his elimination due to that embarrassing loss, and instead probably seek to besmirch his character and shortly down the track get him fired or replaced. So maybe not too far from now, he chooses to have one of those extremely popular meetings with a window, if you know what I mean. Then moving across to a, a few rapid fire of funnies today, so starting off with the first one. Russians, first of all, they seem to hate this, as it's circulating in social media in China that Russians are now being called weak goose by the country for their failures in Ukraine. Wow, even their own partial ally isn't giving them a good rap. Then for another funny, so... Russia's new tech is improving every day, this time with one of its Scooby-Doo vans, aka the Bukunka, complete with upgraded top and front air drone protection. Mad Max, eat your heart out. Although never mind the, the side or the back or the other side for protection, which is typically the incoming attack vector from a drone controlled by a Ukrainian operator, as they simply maneuver around any unwanted obstacles. In fact, just today in Zaporizhia, one was taken out by a Ukrainian FPV loitering uh, drone. And you know what? On the topic of fit for purpose uh, from before, why is Russia still using these civilian Scooby-Doo vans after all of this time? It's as if they've run out of their multi-purpose all-terrain vehicles, like the, the Russian Tiger infantry mobility vehicle. My goodness. Oh, now that I think about it, I haven't seen the Tiger vehicle since maybe this time last year. Was it not good enough for them? They had to downgrade to this embarrassing piece of crap instead? But I think we all know the answers to these questions. Then as for a final funny to round it all off today, guys, so the Russian soldiers received some new tank shells, but there was one slight hiccup. They're empty. So apparently Russian tankies were recently uh, angered about receiving tank shell duds. Then one Russian reportedly posted a video showing exactly what they received. Uh, a coffee thermos <laughs> instead. Heaps of them. Missing their chemical particulates, which is really the active ingredient for these things to perform as intended. Uh, corruption. Corruption and military contractors forced with deadlines to supply military hardware such as the ancient T-54 tanks and shiny new shell duds. It really continues to look like the, the Russia that we all know and love. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, comment and like where you can. Thanks for watching. Uh, but maybe not the 33% of you that my channel analytics recently brought to my attention that you're watching from a TV or a TV platform which I'm extremely humbled and thankful for in learning about that recently. Inevitably, it does make it perhaps near impossible for you guys to comment, so just a quick shout out to you folk as well. So thanks again, everybody, for watching, and I do hope to see all of you guys there in the next one. Cheers.